Thank you for standing. You can be seated this morning. And um, got many announcements yes, uh, today. Yesterday, ladies enjoyed their uh, Mother's Day lunch. We'd like to thank Nancy, Nancy and Elka for organizing everything and preparing the food. They said it was good. And also, uh, what? Oh, that's what's popping. Okay. Yeah, I'll get some batteries. Mike, can you bring me two batteries and turn on the live stream? <laughs> and then also, this Saturday, this Saturday, uh, we'll have a hot dog supper at 5.30. Everyone's welcome to attend that, so get plenty of come out for that. Come with a good appetite. Kevin's cooking the hot dogs, last I heard. They won't let me cook no more. So... Uh,
glad that we can rely on the blessings of God. And sometimes it is in those darkest hours that we find his many blessings. And uh, while we'll stand this morning, we'll sing our congregational living by faith. This time we'll hear from our choir. Never fail. 
Why am I standing? <laughs> Be careful, don't insult nobody. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. 
Father's Day. I'm just sitting right there. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. And now we have a gift for all of the ladies. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. We do have a couple bags left at the end of the service. If you want to take one, if you know somebody that maybe doesn't go to church or maybe you're looking for a church, you take it to them and wish them a happy Mother's Day. Maybe you got a new neighbor <clears throat> that's moved in that you haven't met yet. You say, well, they was giving these out at church today. I thought you might want one. Be nice on that. You can turn me down a little bit, please. And uh, if you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to Proverbs chapter number 31 today. Cassidy will leave it on the verse today, if you don't mind, please. Proverbs chapter number 31 today. I will not be long today because I know we've got lunches to go to. We've got family coming over. We've got plenty of food to eat. Uh, I was kidding this morning with someone that we could, I could preach as long as I wanted to today because the church provided a bunch of bread and stuff out front. But uh, Jim asked me this morning if I could provide him a speaker for out front so he could sit and sample all the bread while we had service today. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to tell that part. I was going to say that for us afterwards. But, uh, but anyway, if you, if you see something out there on that table that you want, feel free to take it with us. Uh, we have a deal worked out with Publix that every Sunday we pick up their rejects. Well, this morning... They gave us a lot more than they're usually supposed to, so uh, we filled up our blessing box, and uh, so we'll be able to give some of that away to you guys, so if you want something off that table, feel free to take it, all right? Proverbs chapter number 31 this morning, when you find your place in Proverbs 31, say amen. All right, verse number 10, who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is far above rubies. Let's go to the Lord in a moment of prayer today. My dear Grace Shea, Father, Lord, we want to thank you for coming for another opportunity to come in your house today to worship and praise you. Lord, we pray today that you would touch and help each and every one of us that's made our ways out to your house. Lord, we pray today for each and every well, we pray for each and every mother, God, that you would continue to bless them and help them and allow them to be the strongholds in their families. God, we pray, we want to thank you for our mothers and for what they mean to us. God, we know that. Some of us don't have our mothers here, but God, we still want to thank you for them, even though they're in our memories today. God, we pray today, Lord, that you would take the word of God and apply it to our lives today. Help us today, Lord, just not be hearers of your word, but God, let us be doers of your word today. And all these things we ask in Christ's name, amen. Most of y'all know that I am not a holiday theme person, right? Marissa was giving me a hard time yesterday about Mother's Day. She said, what are you preaching tomorrow? I said, I don't even tell nobody what I'm preaching today. All right? Most people don't know. Nobody knows except me and God 99% of the time when I come to the platform. But holidays is probably one of the hardest times for a pastor. Mother's Day, Father's Day, Easter's easy. Christmas is, can be easy. It can be hard. But Mother's Day and Father's Day are probably two of the hardest days throughout the year to preach something on. And to be honest with you, can I be honest here? To be honest with you, I dread these days, all right? I love the holidays. I love supporting people. I love showing love to people. 
But you always want to be able to be in the mind of God and in the will of God when you preach. And sometimes that means that you do not preach what goes along with the holiday, right? Several years ago, in my young ministry, I went and preached on Mother's Day. And I preached on hell and I was told I wasn't welcome back at that church. So I said, I minded God. I wasn't supposed to preach a Mother's Day message. But today when I thought about Mother's Day and as I began to pray about it this week, I wanted the mind of God. And, not, and, I, and when I begin to think about Mother's Day, Mother's Day can be a very happy day. It can be a very joyous day. But Mother's Day can also be a sad day. It can be a day of pain and grief. Not everybody looks forward to Mother's Day. Maybe you have recently lost your mother and are experiencing a pain of loss. And if that is the case, my thoughts and prayers go out to you. Maybe you've lost a child and your heart grieves on Mother's Day. And if that's the case, my heart and prayers go out to you. Maybe you're having difficulties with your mother. Your mother wasn't an ideal mother to preach about. Not every mother is a good mother. I'm, I'm, I'm not being mean. I'm not being ugly when I say that. But some, some people aren't good mothers. And you've had bad memories of your mothers. Maybe some of you have, have guilt feelings about motherhood and you have children problems or marriage problems and you don't feel like you're the best mother. Well, that's not a reason not to be looking forward. Maybe there's some that was never able to have children. So Mother's Day is not a joyous occasion for you. Maybe you're a single mom and are struggling with being a good mother to your children. You never know when you wish someone a happy Mother's Day what their background may be. They may can put a smile on their face and say thank you, but deep down inside they could be struggling with being a mother. We have to realize that not every home is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date myself here. As Jim would say, I'm going to go old school right here, all right? Not every home can be happy like the Brady Bunch, right? Not every home can, can be like Ozzie and Harriet Nelson. Not every home can be in those areas. But we all have our own home. And we need to take our home and thank God for our home and love our homes the way that God has given them to us. As I begin to think about this, I would begin to think about Jesus. He being a perfect child. I mean, not everybody could be a perfect child like me. But okay, but no, Jesus was a perfect child. And what would Jesus do if he had to write his mother a Mother's Day card? Could you imagine being the mother of Jesus? He looked up at her and said, I know what you're thinking right now. <laughs> and you think about that. Jesus looking at, the, looking at his other brothers and looking down at them and saying, none of y'all be as perfect as me. I mean, they couldn't argue with that fact, could they not? But if Jesus could write a Mother's Day card today, what would it say? I hope that all of us that have living mothers went and picked out a Mother's Day card. Did you? If you didn't, shame on you. They have them on sale tomorrow for 50% off. <laughs> Am I seeing somebody get elbowed into ribs up here? But anyway, we see Mother's Day. Each of us get a card. Inside of that card is printed a nice little message, right? And on the other side of that card is a blank sheet of paper, right? And on that side of the card is where you're supposed to write how you feel about your mother. And you write it, and you sign it, and you give it to her, and wish her a happy Mother's Day. And during all of that, I thought about Jesus. If he could write a Mother's Day to his mother, what would he say? And better yet, if God took the time today to write a Mother's Day card to each of the mothers that are here at the church today, what would he say in the Mother's Day cards? So as we look at that this morning, I want to give you a few things and I'll be done. Number one, he could write you a card when you feel disheartened. You know, there are times in all of our lives, not just the lives of the mothers, that each and every one of us are disheartened, right? Mothers can be disheartened for many reasons. They can be disheartened for things going on in their personal lives, things going on in their marriage, things going on in their children's lives. And that word disheartened there means to cause to lose hope, enthusiasm, or courage. Now we know that being a mother is not for the weak, right? And it's not for the faint of heart. And I think about mothers and I'm grateful for them. 
I couldn't give birth to a child. I wouldn't want to attempt to give birth to a child. It takes a strong person to be able to do that, right? Am I, am I right, men? None of us want to experience that, right? So when we think about that, then if you do, you've got some problems. But anyway, motherhood is not for the weak. Mothers need a lot of encouragement on a daily basis. So this morning, when I think about a Mother's Day card to you, if you want to go with me this morning, and Cassie, if you want to follow along here, go with me this morning to Isaiah chapter number 40 this morning. I believe if God was to write one to you today, I believe he would give you these verses of Scripture. Isaiah chapter number 40 today, when you find your place there, say amen. All right. And verse number 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Notice this, he giveth power to what? The faint. And to them that might, that have no might, he increaseth what? Strength. Verse 30. Even as the even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not what? Faint. This morning when I think about you being a mother, if you feel like giving up, don't. Be patient and wait on the Lord. Why should I do that? Because God understands where you're at as a mother. When you think about that today, mothers, when you get disheartened, open up your Mother's Day card and read his message to you. Then you can go over to Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 13, where the Bible says to us today, in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which what? Strengtheneth me. When a mother gets disheartened, when a mother feels like she can't get, go any further, when a mother feels like a failure, there are times that mothers feel that way. My mother feels that way every day she talks to my sister. No, I'm kidding. My, every time that mothers feel that way, and doesn't feel like that they're doing enough, doesn't feel like there's enough hours in a day to be the mom that they need to be, remember that God is who strengthens you. Secondly today, everybody good on that part? We're good, say amen. All right, secondly today, mothers get this way too. I believe if God wrote a card, not only would he write it to you when you're disheartened, but number two, he'd write it to you when you're aggravated. Do mothers get aggravated? Uh -huh. Do mothers want to tell their children exactly how they feel? Do they get angry? The Bible tells us to be angry and what? Sin not. When you think about be angry and sin not, what do you mean by sin and not? Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. When you think about that, you can be, it's not a sin to be angry, but it's a sin to stay angry. It's not a sin to be angry at different things, but it is a sin when you let your anger control you. We was talking about this morning in Sunday school. Mike was talking about sin and this morning he asked, was there times that we could sin non-purpose, accidentally is how he worded it, wasn't it? And I said, yes, I believe that. You get angry at somebody and you give them a piece of your mind right off the bat, not even thinking, then that can be considered an accidental sin, right? But when you sit down and somebody makes you mad, and I'll give you an example of that. Yesterday I was on 150. We ain't got no visitors today. I'll be all right, all right? We was on 150, and this woman in a black minivan pulled out in front of me, and I missed her by that much, and I blew the horn. When I blew the horn, she stuck her hand out of the window and began to wave at me, stuck her face out the window and began to yell at me, and I got angry. So I decided that out of my anger that I was going to go pull in the parking lot and give her a piece of my mind what little bit I have left. And then I got thinking about it. What if that fool's got a gun in her van and I pull up and she kills me? She ain't worth it. But I said, if I pull up at church tomorrow and a black minivan's there and I see a woman that looks like her 
I'm going to walk up and say, I'm Pastor Smith. Thank you for flipping me off yesterday. <laughs> Move it on. We all get angry. Bible tells us be angry and sin not. There's a purpose for anger, but you're supposed to overcome your anger. You're supposed to get angry over disobedience, over a lack of respect, and many different things. But if you continue to be angry, then it's a sin. We must learn how to deal with our anger. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter number 15 and verse number 1, A soft answer turneth away what? Wrath. But grievous words stir up anger. You know, sometimes the best answer to give is no answer at all. Because you cannot take back words. I can think something, and you not know what I'm thinking, but if I say it, can I ever take it back? No. As a mother, a mother has to have a filter. I was on the phone with somebody, <laughs> I was on the phone with somebody yesterday, and, and somebody in the background said something, and that person told me they have no filter. And I said, now I know where you got it. But no, when we think about that today, we must be quick to give a soft answer or no answer at all. We must not let our anger control us, but let God control our anger. Paul talked about being angry with a righteous indignation. In other words, he was saying that you shouldn't let your you should be angry at sin, but not at the people committing the sin. Does that make sense today? The Bible says, And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Preacher, what does that mean? None of us should ever go to bed angry. Am I right about that? Husbands, you ever had a fight with your wives and you went to bed angry? How'd you sleep that night? Not good, did you? Wives, you ever had a fight with your husband and you went to bed angry? How'd you sleep that night? Not too good, right? Why? Because we knew that the issue that we was dealing with was not resolved and today us as Christians we must not let the sun go down on our wrath moving on this morning I would give you another one that I believe Jesus would write if you was aggravated if you was disheartened thirdly today when you feel like you need help we must realize that mothers cannot do the job alone and sometimes they don't ask for our help. Now, man, I'm going to preach to us for a minute, all right? Sometimes they do not ask for our help, but they need our help. If you see your wife struggling, then don't just step back and say, well, I'm going to let her struggle. She'll figure it out. No. Be quick to step in and say, where can I help you and how can I help you? And if she says, I've got it, don't worry about me, don't buy that. Find out where and how and when you can help. Am I right? It's like, on, it's like on Mother's Day. You have a spouse, and you say, Honey, I forgot to get you something for Mother's Day. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. No, don't buy that. Valentine's Day. Honey, I was busy, and I forgot to buy you some flowers. Oh, that's okay. No, they do not forget it, men. Okay. Go out there, spend the extra time, the extra money, go out of the way, and be ahead of these things. All right? When we think about that today, mothers need our help. But you know what? There are times that us as men cannot provide the help that mothers need. Only God can provide that help. Say, preacher, prove it. Go with me to Proverbs chapter number 3 this morning. Proverbs chapter number 3. Verse number 5 and 6, when you find your place there, say amen. All right. The Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on all, unto thine own what? Understanding. In all of thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy what? Paths. You know this morning when I think about needing help, we can help change diapers, we can help clean, we can help cook, we can help raise our children. But there are times that a youngin may come up to their mama and ask their mama for help. And mama doesn't know how to give them the help. Mama doesn't want to talk to daddy about the problem. We were sitting in a restaurant the other night eating. 
supper, and we we was li- I was listening to some stories being told at the table that I was at. And the daughter looked at the mom and said, Mama, remember the time? And the daddy looked over and said, I never knew about that. I was like, ooh. I was like, I knew about that. And I started laughing. And I was like, and the mama said, yeah, and I dealt with it. There are times that mamas will keep things bottled up on the inside, not to be secretive, not to hurt in the home, but to help. And when they have questions that are asked that they cannot answer, questions that they don't want to ask someone else, where can they go to get the answers? From God. They go to the Lord and trust the Lord for their wisdom and for their understanding. If he wrote into that card, I believe he would write not only that, but I believe he would write Psalm 46.1 where he said, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. I believe he would also write Psalm chapter number 32 and verse number 8 where it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. That's Psalm chapter number 32 and verse number 8. I believe he would also write to you Psalm chapter number 27 and verse number 14 where he says, Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen you. Thine heart, wait, I say, on the Lord. I believe so far God's wrote a good Mother's Day card, don't you? Lastly today, and I'm done. When you feel tired, I believe God wrote a Mother's Day card to you. Sometimes mothers are asked, do you work? And sometimes people say, no, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Well, for the most part, stay-at-home moms work, do they not? They got to raise those children. They got to change diapers. They got to clean up puke. They got to clean. <laughs> they got to clean up all this stuff that the kids done. One gentleman said it is been said that if the typical mother were out of the business world and was at home, do you know what her value would be worth? About seven hundred thousand a year doing with all she deals with. She's a teacher, she's a maid, she's a cook. Well, let me back up. She's supposed to. (laughs) She's a maid, she's a cook, she's a teacher. She does all of the jobs that they hand off someone else to do. She's a combination of a taxi driver, taking them from here to there. A judge. I know when me and my sister were at fights, we go, I'm going to go tell mama. I'm going to go see what mama says about this. Mama had to be a judge. Then there was times mama was a lawyer. I'll tell you all the time about mama was a lawyer for me. When we were young and growing up in church, we wasn't allowed to sleep in church. Once we got up about seven or eight. One Sunday morning, my mama sat right here where Marissa and Cindy sit. And I was sitting, mama separated me and my sister for some reason. And mama sat right in the middle. My sister was sitting where Marissa sat. I was sitting on the inside. Mama sat where Cindy sat. And my sister kept falling asleep. My daddy was preaching. And if you know my dad as a preacher, he walks up and down the aisle when he preaches the entire service. My daddy walks by and sees my sister sleeping. He stands her up. Well, he goes on preaching down the aisle. Well, she falls out in the aisle. Well, I start laughing. All right? The whole church starts laughing. Daddy goes back to the pulpit. Daddy's checking everything, seeing if his pants ripped, see if his pants are zipped up, all these things. And me and my mama's laughing, and my daddy tells mama to take me out and to give me a whipping for distracting the entire service. (laughs) When the mama didn't give me a whipping, I came back in, and I acted like I got a whipping. And he told the church, he said, when I get home, I'm going to deal with this. The whole church was looking at him funny. So we got home. Daddy told me to go get across the bed and get my whipping. Mama was my advocate. Mama said, you cannot whip me. He said, don't tell me what I can and cannot do. Mama said, hold on. You cannot whip him. I wish today had had cameras then for live streaming services. I'd have made a lot of money off my sister. Mama told him the story, and he got to laughing, and he couldn't whip me. But Mama was my lawyer. Mamas are a chef, psychiatrist, teacher, at times preachers. Oh, God. I'd rather take a sermon from a stranger than Mama sometimes. A doctor and so much more. 
But mothers get tired. What do you think that Jesus would say to a mother that was tired? I believe he would go over to Matthew chapter number 11 and verse number 28 where he write unto me, Come unto me, all you that are labor and are heavy laden. What's that word heavy laden there mean? Overburdened, overwhelmed. And I will give you rest. You won't find rest by hiding in a closet. You won't find rest by going to a bathroom and shutting the door. Y'all ever, ever done that? Samuel's got on my nerves before when I got home from work and I go in the bathroom and shut the door and tell him I was using the bathroom so I could have a minute. And the whole time I'm standing there, he's going, Daddy, Daddy, there ain't no rest in there. <laughs> Let's be honest, all of us has done it, have we not? Don't sit there and act like we're perfect little angels and ain't running hid. Cindy, did you hide from Marissa? I would. <laughs> but moving on. When you get to the end of your rope, mothers, don't hang yourself. That's a good piece of advice there. But instead, come to Jesus and ask him for rest. There's so much more that we could write. These are little things that we know mothers face every day. There's so much more that I believe Jesus could write to a mother on Mother's Day, but I believe it's just simple enough. And I want to say that I'm grateful for each and every mother because you know what? When it's 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, and your youngins are sick, who is it that gets up to be with that youngin? The mama, right? Who is it that goes in there when the baby's crying in the middle of the night? The mama. Us men use the excuse, well, I got to get up and go to work in the morning. Well, you know what mama does too. But I'm grateful for mamas for all that they do. Let's all stand to our feet this morning. Today, as we think about mothers, maybe today as we close out the service and She plays something softly on the piano. We want to do a song of invitation. She just plays something softly. Maybe you want to come around the altar today and say, Lord, I want to thank you for my mother. A mother that loves for me, cares for me, prays for me. Does everything that she can for me. And Lord, I've seen mama in all of these places that the preacher talked about today, but mama kept going because she found her help.